A day in the life of Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is a man who needs no introduction. The CEO of Berkshire Hathaway is a successful man on all fronts. At 89 years old, Nebraska's true son is considered one of the best investors the world has ever seen. A frequent guest to Forbes' Wealthiest People magazine, he has a net worth of $88.9 billion thanks to his conglomerate that owns and operates over 60 companies. How is it possible that one man can be able to execute all these responsibilities? If you need an answer, stick with us. We are about to slit open the daily routine of the world's fourth richest man. Morning Routine Success is not accidental. This business magnate, philanthropist, and super tycoon is one hell of an organized man. He is so organized that his best friend is, guess who? Microsoft's big boss, Bill Gates. The Oracle of Omaha spends 80% of his time reading. He is a devoted book lover and always protects this habit to the bone. He wakes up every day at 6.45 a.m., not as early as most successful people do. He has over the years reiterated that waking up at night is not his cup of tea. I have no desire to work at 4 a.m. in the morning, he said. Maybe this is due to his age, but still, his management method keeps getting better. Warren works out for about an hour and doesn't take breakfast at home. The billion dollar super investor is a lifelong customer at McDonald's. He has a regular menu here and decides which one best suits his appetite every day. He drives to McDonald's every single day for breakfast. He takes five minutes to order either two sausage patties and an egg or a cheese sandwich. He prefers paying in cash. Therefore, he tells his wife to put enough money for breakfast in the car before he leaves. A confessed junk lover, Warren says he eats like a six-year-old. I checked the actuarial table. The lowest death rate is among six-year-olds. This he said in an attempt to defend his undying love for strawberry milkshakes. Warren is also a dedicated client to one of the companies he partly owns, Coca-Cola. He takes five cans of the beverage every single day. From McDonald's, the billionaire heads straight to the office. Work routine. The chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway arrive typically at the office at 9.30 a.m. when the stock markets open. That is where his heart lives, the stock markets. Donning one of his 20 pairs of suits made by the same designer, Madame Lee, all of which he doesn't pay for, by the way. Reason being, well, I don't know too. He walks to his desk, which he has used for over 50 years. Once in the office, much of the time he spends reading. He reads five newspapers every morning, starting with his favorite, Omaha World Herald, a company he bought back in 2011. Asked about his obsession with reading, he said, read 500 pages like this every day. That's how knowledge works. It builds up, like compound interest. All of you can do it, but I guarantee not many of you will do it. Warren reads and reads. He barely sends or receives email. Neither does he spend time looking at his phone. He says reading helps him avoid impulsive decisions in business. His reading materials are separated impressively. Financial statements, newspapers, and books. His system completely shuts down except for his reading instincts. He switches off television, doors, and windows, and gets in the zone. Some of the books he credits his success to include The Wealth of Nation by Adam Smith, The Intelligent Investor, and Security Analysis, both by Benjamin Graham. Warren is not a big fan boardroom meeting either. Give him two options when at the office. First, he'd choose reading. The final option would be, guess what? Reading. Bill Gates may be his best friend, socially, financially, and economically. But Warren has a sad story to tell about Microsoft. He has only sent one email in his life, which apparently ended up in federal court. Warren in 1997 responded to an email from Jeff Rakes, an executive at Microsoft. His response was published in a Wall Street Journal article, marking the end of him sending emails at work. As stated above, the staunch believer of long-term investment doesn't enjoy meetings at work, and if he has to attend, it better be very brief and straight to agendas. He tags along with his favorite snacks in the meetings, candies, and chocolate walnut fudge. 
After work routine. After a busy day of reading and analyzing stock market behaviors, the legendary investment icon drives his old Cadillac DTS back home. Mr. Buffett is a man who loves to play, and he is an avid bridge player. He enjoys playing this card game with his billionaire buddy, Bill Gates. It is a game you can enjoy when you are in your 90s, and you are seeing a different intellectual challenge every seven minutes. It is the best exercise there is for the brain, he said. There you have it. If you thought it's just an ordinary game, then you just got damned. It is a minecracker limited for critical thinkers only. Warren Buffett spends about 12 hours a week playing this game he really loves. In fact, he once sponsored a bridge competition in 2006 and named it Buffett Cup. The jewel of Omaha adores this game so much that he once cheekily quoted, if I'm playing a bridge and a naked woman walks by, I don't even see her. Another billionaire-like hobby Warren subscribes to is playing ukulele. In his free time away from work, the business magnate likes pulling the strings of this musical instrument. His relationship with ukulele started way back on somewhat shaky grounds. A woman he once had a crush on as a teen was dating a guy who owned a ukulele. So Warren thought it wise to learn the skills of playing and acquire his own. Unfortunately, the lady ended up snubbing Buffett to stay with his guy. We all know she missed a chance of a lifetime, but I guess it is true. Choices have consequences. Thanks to her, the man behind many companies' success is a skilled player of this lute family instrument. Sometimes Buffett performs at meetings, during interviews, and in conventions. Warren Buffett is not quite the money spender type of billionaire. Typical of any investor, his money barely sees the light of day for luxurious tweets. He'd rather donate to charity than buy a fleet of expensive cars and spend on magnificent mega mansions. I mean, he is that guy. He also enjoys his golf, but not in a Porsche golf club. I can be a member of every golf club that I want to be a member of, but I'd rather be playing golf here with people I like than at the fanciest golf course in the world, he told Q&A. Come to think of it, Buffett's most expensive venture has to be the private jet he bought for the sake of constant business travels. A dedicated lifelong fan of Nebraska football, Warren attends matches when he is in a position to. He loves this sport so much that he invented a competition amongst his employees back in 2014. He challenges them to guess all 16 teams that would participate in the NCAA March Madness. And for anyone who gets it right, he promises to pay $1 million yearly for the rest of his or her life. That's now what we call a baller move. Unfortunately, no one has even come close to winning the contest in its six years existence. The last day of the week that is Sunday, the business magnate developed quite a thoughtful hobby. He treats a dozen of kids to an ice cream party at Dairy Queen, which is part of his attractive investment network. Most of these kids are his grandchildren and their friends. He, however, complains that immediately after getting their orders, the kids spend time sticking their heads to the phones. Warren loves his sleep. After a long day of playing with figures, he retires to bed daily at 10.45 p.m. and follows that bedtime routine religiously, a decent sleep for eight hours. That is how the Nebraska native legendary investor spends his time, both at work and at home. Final thoughts. Like everybody else, Warren Buffett has had several setbacks in life, both as a business mogul and as an ordinary man. But his way of life is a blueprint to emulate for people seeking to reach greater heights. From being rejected to Harvard Business School, to his father-in-law predicting he would fail in his business quest, Warren teaches us the modesty and self-drive that most people in business lack. His business acumen makes it valuable to all the companies he has toiled to build. The biggest lesson that can be learned from this godfather of business is patience. It is no doubt that that patience is not the ability to wait, but how you act while you're waiting.